Hey guys, Nikki Hated Game Dev here, and this is going to be part two of our Claymore series. Now, I went ahead and whipped this amazing model up in Blender, but it's just kind of more so to preserve a, uh, or to give us a nice visual. So, what we want to do is we want to start working on the basic logic. So, we're going to start with just some example testing and blueprint, then we're going to carry that stuff over to C++. So, what I want to get going is a simple overlap event. So in the case of this, I want to set up, that is way too fast. I want to set up just a simple box overlap. So we're going to go ahead and add a box collision component, right like so. You can move it out in front. Let's go ahead and just get the above view. And start sizing it up. So maybe, I'm not a fan of the snapping. Something kind of like this. Go and move it up a little bit. Just so we can hopefully set it off. So with this overlap, what we can do is let's go ahead and make sure generate overlap events is enabled. And if we scroll down, you can see on component begin overlap. So let's go ahead and add this event. And where it says other actor, we're going to do that was not it. We're going to do a print string, and we are going to print the name of the other actor. So here we have our Claymore right here. If I hit play and I walk into it, you can see it prints out at the top left our character. I guess in the case of uh, the Claymore, I also want to disable the collision. So I'll do that later. So that's kind of the general idea. So we only really want this component to begin, I guess you could say overlapping, on the server. We don't really want to bother with it on the clients because what we're going to do is when the Claymore goes to get destroyed, we want to perform the effects. So the explosion with the sound and particles and that kind of stuff, that stuff will be handled on the client. So again, remember, client is only there for visuals. The server is the one that does the logic. So the server is going to deal the damage. The clients are going to see the explosion and the effects. So let's go ahead and start setting that up. So in this case, for the time being, we're going to use a box component for the overlap. Now, later on, we'll end up switching it up so we can use a custom mesh for this. So that way we can kind of more so tune the size and kind of like the area that we are tracing for. So let's go ahead and head to our claymore.h and .cpp. And I want to rename our test mesh to claymore mesh, like so. And I want us to set tick to false, because we really don't want a tick. So we can go ahead and remove our tick function. And I want to go ahead and just assign categories. So this one's going to be, I'll just start naming all the categories claymore. So we have our Claymore, let's add another property, and this one's going to be for our box. So in this case, it's a component, so you box component. So it's declared in header box component.h. So it's going to go ahead and automatically include it, which I kind of like and kind of don't like, but we're going to forward declare you box component. So we have our box component. Let's call this one, I guess, Claymore overlap okay now we're going to go ahead and add that so claymore overlap equals create default sub object of the type you let's fill it for me i guess not you box component and we're going to give it the name of claymore overlap component now i went ahead and included components box component for me Go ahead and do the same. And we want to set this up. So Claymore overlap, set up attachment. We're going to set it up to our root component. So basically our Claymore mesh. So root component. And we are pretty much good to go. I do want to disable the collision for our mesh. So Claymore mesh. Search for a collision. We look through here. We can see... There's get collision enabled. There should be a set collision enabled. 
E collision enabled. We're going to do no collision because we don't want to have it, you know, blocking us or anything like that when we're trying to walk. Realistically, a Claymore is something you can walk right through. And I keep forgetting that UE5 has very good live coding support, but I'm going to probably end up closing and reopening the editor a bunch just out of habit. So let's go ahead and compile and head back to the editor. Okay, back in our Claymore blueprint, we have our Claymore mesh and we have our Claymore overlap. So we're just going to go ahead and, you know, roughly position it. Now we had it. Something kind of like that. And just make it a little wider. I'm not really worried about it. But here we are. So if I go ahead and hit play, we should be able to walk through it. Okay, that's just what I wanted to make sure of. But we don't have an overlap event. So now we want to bind the, you know, our Claymore overlap to be able to fire. So just like our runner print string, we want to do this and we only want to do it for the server. So let's head back over to our project and do to do, do Claymore overlap. So if memory serves, I don't remember where this should really fire from. I think maybe post init components, but either way, let's go ahead and just work with it. So Claymore overlap, search for on, on component begin overlap and dot add dynamic and here we basically take in what class and the function so a claymore or sorry this and then our function so we don't have a function yet and I don't really know the parameters so the easy way to find the parameters is if we control click on on component begin overlap or whatever it is for your, your uh, IDE here we have our component begin overlap signature. Let's go to that. And here you can see basically all of the components or all of the parameters. So we have the overlap component, the other actor, the other component, so on and so on. You can kind of see how it follows along with this guy, overlap component, other actor, other component, so on and so on. So we're going to grab everything from the overlap component all the way to the very end. Go over. Why are you so slow? There we go. Okay. Now we got to make it a function. So down here, we're just going to do a U function. And we're going to do void on overlap begin. And we're going to paste all of those in there. As you can see, we're going to have a bunch of little problems. That's because of the formatting, so remove the commas between the data type and their variable name, like so. And then we should be good to go. So now we can go ahead and create our definition, like that. And we now have our on overlap begin. So a claymore on overlap begin. Not what I meant to do there, like so. So with any luck, screw it, I'm just gonna, I don't know what all is gonna work and not work with the live coding, I'm just doing out of habit. Let's go ahead and build and make sure we are okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna print out a string. Okay, so build success. Now what we wanna do is we wanna print out to the string or to the screen whenever we overlap. So in this case, we're gonna do a U Kismet system library. You're going to have to make sure you include Kismet, Kismet system library. And this is so we don't necessarily have to do it as a log each time. We can actually see it on screen. And we can call print string. First parameter is going to be our world. Second one's going to be the string. So in this case, we're going to do overlapped. Then I think the rest are good to go by default. So we can ignore the remaining parameters. So let's go ahead and launch our editor. All right, reopen it back up. Still have our log here, hit play, and let's walk. And it says overlapped, overlapped, overlapped. So we're good to go. Now we wanna change up some of the logic a little bit. We want this to only fire on the server. So what I mean by that 
is let's play as the new editor window and number of players to two. So here we have our server. I have the wrong setting set. Also change net mode to listen server. So here we go. So as I walk past it, server says overlapped and client says overlapped. And when the server walks through it, they both say overlapped. So basically the overlap event is firing on both the client and the server. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick test here and see if we can find this in the on component, uh, on post init component or whatever it's called. And if that works, we're going to move that for over there before we uh, do the authority check. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so after doing a little bit of research, it does seem like the preferred places to begin play. You can do so in post initialized components. However, there's no real point to it if it's going to be the only thing that you actually have in there. So we're, we're just going to continue with begin play. Now, all we have to do to make this fire on the server is do an authority check. So if has authority, then we bind our component begin overlap. That's literally it. So we're going to go ahead and run our live coding instead of the old close and reopen. And when we hit play now, what you'll see is here on the client, I'll cross over. The server says overlapped, the client does not. When the server walks over, it says overlapped, and the client does not. So the overlap is only firing on the server because it's only being bound on the server, and that's what we want. So in the next video, we're going to continue, and we're going to work on just a very simple, I guess, damage system. All it's going to really be is just an integer that detracts from our health or an integer for our health. And when we, you know, cross the claymore, it blows up. We subtract from our health. Nothing fancy. This is just to get you the general idea on how to work with it. And you would implement it with your own health system. So that's going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hop in my Discord and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.